Elliot to welcome to the podcast today, Brian Brenzel. Did I say that right? No. <laughs> I can't say your last name. Brenzel. Brenzel. There we go. We'll start over. I would right. like to welcome to the podcast today, Brian Brenzel. Brian owns Vet to Live Personal Training um, here in Denver, Colorado, and he trains out of ATO Fitness mm-hmm. in Greenwood Village. And he also is an Orange Theory coach. And how many? Uh, I'm at Wash Park. And Glendale right now, so just two right now. So just two for now. Give me. For we'll now. talk about it in a month. Okay. All right. So my first question for you was, what was your first job? My first job, I cleaned dishes at a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> in Philly? Uh, no, that, no, or I was in. Uh, it was in Detroit. in Detroit. It was in Detroit at the time. Yeah, I cleaned dishes. You didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know uh, that. <laughs> That's why I love doing this. I liked it. This is fun. <laughs> this is fun for me. Uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to play baseball. I want to play baseball, uh, and then when I realized I was, my attitude did not, <laughs> did not translate to pro baseball. Um, I wanted to be a sports center anchor. Then I wanted to do a bunch of other things after that. <laughs> so your dad owned or owns a construction company. He owns a construction uh, construction company in uh, Pennsylvania still. So was there any pressure for you to go into the construction business, or is that something you thought you might do at some point? Um. I was hoping that it would never be pushed upon me, which it never was, because I think um, my parents got divorced, so when I went back to Pennsylvania, he would try and teach me to do these, and one day, we were on a roof, and I just decided to take a nap, (laughs) and after that, after that, it was never pushed on me again. That is so so funny. You took a nap? I took a nap on the roof. On the roof. I didn't fall. (laughs) I took a nap, though. That is awesome. Rooftops, very comfortable. <laughs> so, so your dad was like, never mind. Yeah, basically. Never mind. Basically, with it. never. It never came back up. Never came back up again. <laughs> never mind, Junior. It Not was happening. Yeah, it was okay. What's for dinner? Awesome. So, how long ago did you move to Denver? Two thousand nine. So August twelfth, two thousand nine. So that would that's be math. That's time math. Nine years ago. So it will be nine years in about three weeks, three four weeks. Why did you move to Denver? So I was just kind of getting tired. I lived in Michigan at the time in the Detroit area, and I just kind of got tired of Michigan. And you know it was when Facebook was just coming up? Uh-huh. And I put on there, it's time for a change. I don't know, something annoyed me that day. And my cousins live in Parker. Oh, and that's right. I, uh, she had like commented on my post and said, oh, just come out to Denver. And I was like, haha, okay. And then two months later, I was here. I had never been here before. Um, I packed up all my stuff. They let me live in their basement for the first five, six months I was here, and then s- smooth sailing after that. But you weren't a personal trainer then, were you? No, no. I, I. Where were you working? I was uh, when I left. I was bartending when I left, and then when I moved here, I found a job. I got here on Wednesday and had a serving job Friday morning, and then it just kind of went on from there. So how did you? How did you? How did you move from waitressing or doing serving to personal training? I would go to the gym on and off, like, four months at a time, four off, four on and four off all the time. And <laughs> That's uh, funny. That's a funny, like, cycle. Like, all right, I've hit four months. I have to leave. It months. was basically four months on, four months off all the time. And then when I was opening new restaurants, I was a little higher from the chain, but I was working from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every it's day. Every day. Every day. And the gym was now my, was now kind of like my getaway. And I looked my, looked in the mirror one day, and um, you might not even know this about me. I'm a big believer in uh, 21 days makes a change. Uh-huh. 21 days. Uh, so I looked yeah, in the mirror one day. Yeah, you say that all the time. 20, 21 days. 21 days makes a change. 21 days. Um, and I was like, all right, 21 days straight at the gym. And then ever since then, if I take one day off, I am, you, you've been there. I'm <laughs> I not, know, you're not, you're not I'm you. I'm not the best me if I take <laughs> a day off anymore. So I started that, and then obviously see changes in my life this was no diet no anything this was just working out and then people would start coming up to me at the gym asking me questions and I would give them advice and then weeks months later they'd come back and be really appreciative of it and say thank you it changed this 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 for me Mm -hmm. and I found that it was much more uh therapeutic for me Mm -hmm. much much more beneficial for my mindset and I was happy I was happy I was helping people and it was not um helping people at a restaurant who were not so nice. <laughs> right. Just serve me. Don't like actually help me exactly. serve my life. Exactly. Anyway. At all. So. Awesome. So that so that's when you found your niche in helping people with health. 
That's, yeah, that's when it started. That's yeah. really cool. So you were just like, oh, well, maybe this is what I want to do. Um, yeah, I decided that I was going to, after all, all, after all this stuff went down, I had actually, I was still working at my restaurant job. I was a bar manager at the time. And we were opening up a new place. And I just wasn't seeing eye to eye with our upper, our owners, basically. Mm -hmm. And realized that it just wasn't going to go anywhere. And I got tired. So I looked into personal training certification mm -hmm. because Hayes, um, who owns ATO Fitness, mm -hmm. we had run into each other at a Chipotle somewhere. And he may not remember this, but he was like, he had pushed me towards personal training before and said he'd be really good at it. Um, then we ran into each other and I was like, hey, I'm doing this uh -huh. certification and stuff. And he, a couple months later, was opening up ATO Fitness. So it kind of all. Just all kind of happened, just kind of clicked place. into place. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, what is your personal training philosophy? Do you have a philosophy? Do I have a philosophy? Um, I've only been training you can with go you for an hour, for a year for, and a half, and, and, and I have no idea if you have a philosophy. Uh, my number one philosophy, it might not be a philosophy, but it's something I live by, is be better than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's the quote we'll put on the board. Yes, that'll um, be that, our board That'll be our quote. quote. Um, and that's really the philosophy for me. Like, I think everyone's different. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a particular you're gonna have to do this many sets of this many repetitions mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna make you eat 900 calories a day I'm not gonna make you do that, that sounds horrible. my philosophy and my hope is that and it's what I based fit to live off of mm -hmm. it's fit to live life mm -hmm. if you want to go climb that mountain climb the mountain if you just want to be able to play with your kids every day we want to do things that's gonna make you better play or more able to play with your right. kids so whatever they need Right. So it's tailored to the, the client's goal. Every, every person. What if, I know this has happened a couple times, you have men come in and they're just like, I just want to do upper body. Like, um, I'll say how no. Do you, <laughs> how do you deal with that? I'll, I'll laugh. <laughs> I'll laugh. <laughs> and I'll say no. No. And I'm like, how would you like it if someone came up to you and just talked about your chicken legs? Like, it's not, <laughs> not fun, I bet. Um, and I'll, talk, I'll sit them down real quick. I'll be like, I know you just want to get gains, bro, but... <laughs> I don't, I don't train bros. We like, don't train bros. No, we don't train bros. Like, well, we're here to be better at everything. Right, and, you know, what we tend to do is more functional anyway, mm -hmm. and if you're just doing upper body, then you're probably going to hurt yourself. Well, yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Sorry, everyone at the 24-hour <laughs> fitness and stuff, who that's all you do. Um, it's not how we get better at life, and that's kind of what it's about, is being better at life. Right. Be better than you were yesterday. Yeah. Well, I like leg day, so. Yeah, you like <laughs> love leg day. I'm always like, is it leg day? Can we do leg day? It's <laughs> oh, very true. <laughs> no, upper body for you. Yes, I know. Um, so, how did you end up at Orange Theory? So, you also coach Orange Theory. Mm -hmm. I also coach Orange Theory. Um, my, when I lived in Wash Park, the Wash Park area, I had my, my dog Brooks, and he was a puppy at the time, and we just play all the time, and we ran into a girl named Katie who had a dog as well. So they would end up being play, um, play buddies that have play dates and stuff like that. So she knew I was training and did one-on-one -on -one training, and mm -hmm. then we hadn't seen each other because I moved to DTC, and we ran into each other at 24-Hour Fitness um, working out, and I made her work out with me. Uh, so in the middle of it, she was like, have you ever done group training? I'm like... Yeah, I've done some, like, that I do, mm -hmm. but never something big like that. And she's like, well, you should really come try Orange Theory. And I was like, eh, no. I've never stepped foot in Orange Theory, mm -hmm. but everything you hear is just, oh, it's just cardio all mm -hmm. the time. And I'm it's like, a lot yeah, of it's, rowing. it's a lot of rowing. I'm like, and that's not my thing. She's like, just come in, try it out. So uh, the next day, the next day, um, we did an open audition, and it was just me and the owner uh, two of the owners, uh, Josh Sodden, who's like he's a recruiter for now for all of the trainers and a phenomenal trainer in his own, and they basically just gave me a mic and said go. They gave you a mic. Yeah, they gave me a mic. And which, it was all over. Uh, yeah, once you give me a mic, I mean my love for boy bands and I'm good. Um, yeah, and there no one on the treadmill and they were just like, all right, do it. Right. So Orange Theory has helped build your personal training business. It helps, yeah, it, it helps um, just because I'm now, I went from knowing you guys who mm -hmm. are my clients and knowing your friends, mm -hmm. well now I've met hundreds and thousands of people who I wouldn't have had an avenue to meet if it wasn't for Orange Theory. And it's as little as um, if we're friends on Facebook and someone 
mm-hmm. tagging me mm-hmm. in a post saying I had an awesome orange workout with Brian. Well, right. I just got introduced to a thousand of their friends, and three of them maybe like, well, I wonder if he does personal training, and then they click on my name and see that that is my business. So it's it definitely it's been amazing. So it's changed the way you do business. Also, oh yes. Because now you have choices, more choices. More choices, more avenues, more data points. Yeah, a lot more connections. Mm-hmm. It's all about the connections. Awesome. Um, so what is your long range plans? Long range plans? I know we talk about this like in different ways all the time. Uh, long range plans. I I enjoy both both things I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I would love to own my my own gym at some point. Um, concept yet to be determined. We'll say that for now. Um, but I would love it's to own my secret. yeah. I would love to own my own gym and have say in everything mm-hmm. that goes on. And um, there's a bunch of different thought processes behind that right now. Still a lot a long ways away, but that's the that's the end game mm-hmm. is being able to have a bigger platform than I have now mm-hmm. to be able to help a broader. A, a broader area of people. Um, people. Yep. Um, whether There's it be so many franchise options too. A lot of franchise options. Um, I don't think I'll go franchise route. Um, it's just not my style. Right. Um, but I think there's ways that I can help people that have not been addressed yet. Right. And that's the goal. Yeah. Um, are you thinking more group format? Um, I really enjoy my one-on-one, so there's always going to be an aspect of one-on-one for me, no mm-hmm. matter what I decide to do, uh, because, like, and even with Orange Theory, group, group, group training is so much fun, fun. Um, but there's something to be said for being able to have that one-on-one time, and you get to hit muscle imbalances, or... Form stuff. Or, or, or yeah. mental imbalances, like, right? not in imbalances, but you get to make true friends one-on-one whereas you may have a lot of acquaintances in in group training Mm -hmm. but one-on-one you make a friend for life Mm -hmm. and that's really what I love the most about it right the people stuff Mm -hmm. the people people stuff stuff. (laughs) the people stuff um I always every time I do an orange theory class it's just every once in a while um I'm always just watching the people who obviously haven't like figured out like how to do a lot of Mm -hmm. like the lifting stuff or like the weighted stuff and they're always picking like little tiny weights, and I'm always just like, wow, like I'm always like I always have the heavy weights, and I look around, and I'm like, nobody has heavier weights than okay. Well, there's yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of beginners that have never touched the weight before. Right. So you want them to start with the lighter stuff, but they also a lot of people there who maybe have worked out for a long time won't don't believe you when you say no, you're stronger than that, mm-hmm. and you can be stronger than that. And you don't have the yourself. time to do that or not. Um, you theory. you do the best you can. Yeah. You really do the best you can. Yeah. Um, but some people just they are set in their ways. <laughs> That's and true. It's true for anything, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you learn you learn to understand that. I used to get really mad at it, and now it's just it's the nature of the beast. <laughs> it's the you just of smile. Of training people. You're like okay. I get it. Awesome. So I guess I only have one more question for you. Um, what is your favorite fitness book? Fitness book? Um, Supple Leopard. Supple Leopard? The Supple Leopard. It is, for lack of a, um, lack of a better term, it's a corrective exercise book, basically. Okay. And it goes through so many different um, muscle imbalances and ways to fix them so you've always seen me with a lacrosse ball yeah and this is basically why this book is because it's taught me a lot about using a Mm -hmm. lacrosse ball um, resistance bands things like that to correct muscle imbalances Um, so people who have to see chiropractors all the time maybe they don't have to people who see physical therapists maybe they don't have to Mm -hmm. if they just learn to address their body properly self self myofascial release Mm -hmm. stuff like that Mm -hmm. to learn to teach themselves to do it Mm -hmm. so they can save money on that aspect and that's that book has taught me so much about just the body Mm -hmm. and certain ways to manipulate it to make yourself feel better for now and later yeah it's been really interesting um i actually see you know i see a Mm -hmm. chiropractor who does the body the muscle balance stuff too and it's changed my training Mm -hmm. It's changed what I can do, and I'm actually sore on the left side now. <laughs> just the right side. Different sides. <laughs> Different sides. So cool. you've been working on your Instagram mm-hmm. a lot lately. Um, and has that, have you seen any? Um, I've been using, yeah, it's 
it's fun just because when we first met, I I told you I'm not a big social media person. I don't particularly like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've learned to enjoy it. You're kind of a bad millennial about that. Yeah, I'm a bad millennial about that. <laughs> I am on the on the older side of millennials, but mm-hmm. but I've learned to use it. And yeah, I touched on it on the Facebook thing earlier mm-hmm. because once you realize that it's everything nowadays, when and this is what I tell any trainers who are coming up who ask me for advice who had the same problem I did as they just weren't they're not big social media fans Mm -hmm. um well here's your situation whether it's Instagram whether Mm -hmm. it's Facebook mostly Facebook like this where if someone tags you in it you just got introduced to all of their community right and uh, and all you did was talk to somebody talk to someone or you were coaching a class Mm -hmm. they had a great one-on-one training session with you yeah, but, like, encourage them. Like, be friends on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And if they had a great time, they're going to be, like, had a great workout with Brian. Right. And now Brian just got introduced to everybody, so thank you for that. Yeah. And um, Instagram's kind of the same way. But you can... But now you're... It's all about likes and stuff on Instagram, which isn't fun for me, but it's a nature of the beast kind of thing. So half my Instagram ends up being my dog anyway. Um, which Which too. drives my business much more than my actual personal training stuff. But it gives you, he has the cuteness. <laughs> but it gives you the platform to show what you do. Mm-hmm. And people, if they're on the video, if they're willing to do a video, they're usually having fun doing it. Mm-hmm. So now people, thousands of people are being introduced to your training. Mm-hmm. And the people that are doing it are smiling because they're having a good time. And they know they're on camera. <laughs> and they know they're on camera. And no one wants to look on camera like they hate life. Right. So now they're happy and now they're working hard. Right. And they're high-fiving because we know I love high-fives. We're usually laughing. And we're usually laughing. And now now what just happened? Now everyone who's seen that video, they might not be looking for a trainer, but you know what? When they are, or if they are, they're going to go back to that video in their head and be like, they looked like they were working hard but having a great time. He seems like someone I would want to talk to. Yeah, we laugh a lot. We do laugh all the time. <laughs> we laugh a lot. Sometimes too much, but yeah, we laugh all, <laughs> Sometimes laugh we all talk time. a little too much during training, but well, Ryan's always like, stop talking. And, well, <laughs> time I, to work. Well, and I also say, like, you get, my clients, you guys know more about me than, sorry, mom, than <laughs> my mom will ever know, and a lot of times it's vice versa, right. to where it's just another family member you're talking to, and that's really cool. That's right. really cool, too. Like I said, you're my most expensive friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and I follow some fitness personalities like Amanda Bucci. Mm-hmm. Like, she just fascinates me. You know, not because of, like, her aesthetic, which is amazing, but, like, what she has done with Instagram mm-hmm. and how she's helped people build, you know, Instagram businesses. And, like, it's just very, very fascinating to me. And she's, like, 24 or something. And well, she's built this empire through Instagram. And that's what Instagram does. It's in... What I love, I love the Instagram models who, we'll call them models or fitness models, Mm -hmm. who show what real life is like. Mm -hmm. And then, and I forget the girl's name who, it just slips me right now, but she has her, what you see on Instagram photo Mm -hmm. and the real photo. And those are the girls, those are the girls, the guys, the fitness professionals that I love because unfortunately some of them are setting unrealistic expectations, Mm -hmm. um, which is a, my main issue with Instagram itself. Right. Because it's the one show. percent. These are the people who are like have the ability to actually. Look and these like are that. Uh, and these are the people that just destroyed their body for a month prepping for this one day of videos, or this inspirational video to you. Mm-hmm. Um, that people will click like and follow them mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, it's it's those people which great that you can make your body look like that, mm-hmm. but now show, now show your emotional response to it. Now right. show everything that went up to pulling water to eating 500 calories a day, things like that. And how um, miserable you were. And how miserable you were. Because I wrote, if you remember, I wrote yeah, I yeah, you have when to. I, because I did a photo shoot and I wrote what my entire experience about it and how, well, we know my experience with it, how it was, it was an experience to do, but I would never wish anyone's body to go through things like that. Because it's extremely it's, isolating to you, right? It's isolating. Your friends do things. It's borderline my my dad read it thought I was depressed I'm like I'm not depressed this is just the emotional roller coaster that you go through is insane and some people more power to them are okay with that but well, I was not I was not one of my favorite memes is like my body type is 
I work out, but I also really like tacos. <laughs> <laughs> I sent that to three of my clients earlier this week. Did you? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's almost bought much, the t-shirt. That's almost pretty bought. much my my. Well, aesthetic. now now I know what to get you for your birthday. Yep. See, I, now I know the workout shirt. <laughs> I know right where to find it. There you go. I like tacos and bacon. Should I plug Amazon? <laughs> whiskey and. <laughs> and whiskey. <laughs> and margaritas and yeah. All right, alcohol and workout shirts. Got it. You got it. <laughs> Um, what, so you're currently working on a certification. Yep, this will be my fifth, fifth my fifth certification. certification. And why did you just, so tell me about that one and why you decided to do that one. It's a pre and postnatal certification um, through uh, Fit for Birth. And why I decided to do it, it was actually, it was the first demographic when I did research when I was training mm -hmm. um, that I found to be, um, I, I found underserved, definitely, definitely underserved. People, trainers, seem to be scared mm -hmm. to do anything wrong yeah. with it's women who are pregnant. And um, my my question about that was, well, why? Mm -hmm. Why? Like, I understand that you're afraid to do something wrong, so educate yourself to make the right choices. Right. Um, so I did my first four certifications, which I thought were going to be most prudent to me, mm -hmm. being able to train properly. Mm -hmm. And... It was about a about six months ago or so. I was like, okay, I've um, I have the drive again to learn more, and this was what I wanted to do. So I researched a bunch of different uh, pre postnatal certifications, and this Fit for Birth platform seemed really great. It takes a holistic approach at childbirth, which I find uh, really really inspiring. It's really fun, and I learn about childbirth, which is something that most guys just stay away from. Um, and then we get to talk about it. <laughs> well, and we, and we talk about it. Um, and especially with you being a dual as well. Right. Like, so I say things to you now and you're like, what? Like, yeah. how do you know that? Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, single man. How do you know about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. How do you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 32 year old. I'm like, I, and I find it just awesome to learn about things like that because mm -hmm. you're learning about the human body again it's a great refresher for things you've learned mm -hmm. um and you just it's a different approach i've never looked at anything really in a, in a holistic environment and that's mm -hmm. what that is it's a whole holistic environment and it just makes you think it makes you challenge your beliefs right. and i already won two chapters in that stuff that sunk with me like stuck with me i are, i've already used so right. i see i see pregnant women all the time training at Orange Theory, mm -hmm. and I went up to, one of the pregnant women was asking me a question about um, some exercises we have for women who are pregnant, and I was like, well, how many weeks are you? Mm -hmm. And she said, 26 weeks. I was like, oh, you're right at the end of your second trimester. And she <laughs> looked at me and was like, Good math. how did you, I'm like, oh, it's something I'm, I'm studying, I've studied, so I understand. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and said, I actually hired a personal trainer, my first child, and he knew nothing about how to help me, what was happening in my body, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that is the exact reason. Th that's the exact reason I identified it as the market I would like to reach out to because mm -hmm. no one knows, and most people are afraid to, mm -hmm. and if a lot of them are just making stuff up, and that's where the problems come in, right. is making stuff up. So I found a, a course, I found a, a program that can teach me right from week zero mm -hmm. through week 40 and then six to 12 months after that right. so it's their entire pregnancy because that's like an entire different set of physiology completely different it is like learning a new language um just like personal training was at first mm -hmm. learning a new language it is a completely different language mm -hmm. and it's fun though right. and it's great that you can just take little nuggets of information and spit out okay. that yeah the spit out that you're at the end of your second trimester and she immediately has more respect for you. Mm -hmm. And I think it realizes that you actually care yeah. that you want her baby to be safe while yeah. she's working out. Well, and it's trust. It's, it's trust. trust that you know and I about. think it's immediate trust. And that's really awesome, too, because now you've also just made a friend. Mm -hmm. You've made a potential client. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, she's like, okay, like he... He knows what he's talking about, and he's here for me. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've seen, just like even at yoga or wherever that we were giving, you know, post postnatal women like really, really 
bad advice. <laughs> you should be blanking. No, 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 no. That's a bad plan for diastasis. Yeah, there's, like, yeah. You know, these things that people just don't understand. In the fitness world, there's just t- too many. And you and I have also talked about the people that I know locally that do the pre and post natal. Mm-hmm. They don't really even work that much. Like, they're yeah. not, like, one-on-one training. No, no. Um, and not an environment that people want to be in. Exactly. Sometimes, too. Well, it's a, it has to be a very trusting environment as well. That's what, when you first meet with people, especially, and I'm not fully certified in this yet, but I could bring a uh, woman who's pregnant in and do an assessment and know what I'm talking about, but a lot of trust has to be made, basically, right when they walk in or before that, because obviously I would I would imagine that you've met them before. Right. Most likely at some point, because... Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people do I, especially with social media, do you mm-hmm. meet anymore that you've not interacted with? Some, in that, somewhere. In that, yes, in that environment. Right. Not a lot of people are just walking in your door saying, all right, I want to train. Mm-hmm. I, we've never met before, but you're here. Yeah. Well, and then now you have the ability, because a lot of your clients are female. Mm-hmm. A lot of my clients are female. And a lot of them haven't had kids yet. Exactly. Or most of the ones I've met. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's going to be great is that when, I mean, maybe one of my clients gets pregnant and I'm like, Awesome. awesome. And here's what we're gonna do for you now. Mm-hmm. And there's no me researching. There's none of that. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. there's no break in. Nope. There's no break in their fitness goals. As there sh- and and there shouldn't be. It should be straight. You've been working out mm-hmm. six days a week, five uh, five six days a week. Okay, we're still gonna work out. Yeah. We straight can still do through. That. We can still do that. We're gonna do it safely. We're gonna do it properly. And there's gonna be at least from what I'm studying and from what I truly believe now. And there's a lot of misconceptions in the world, even with present day doctors and stuff like that, mm-hmm. things you can and can't do, yeah. um, that you're able to do now. It's right. really cool. But you guys get to still have that benefit of mm-hmm. the exercise. Exactly. And you can have a much healthier, healthier pregnancy, much healthier post pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And if you tell a woman that she can go down, um, back to her pre pregnancy size in a week, that sells it right there because because if you're doing everything properly throughout your pregnancy, mm-hmm. that's actually something that can happen, it's which is really cool. As long as you're doing, <laughs> it is. Um, as long as you do everything through your pregnancy properly, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's it's amazing what what a pregnant body can do. Mm-hmm. And I think we put a lot of restrictions on that, which is not really physiologically correct. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. All right. Thank you. That's fun. That was good. You didn't believe that. That's true, though. Hey y'all, thanks for listening. If you found this podcast to be inspiring, helpful, and entertaining, please like and subscribe. This helps us grow the community and reach more people. If you're interested in learning more about this episode's guest or accessing any of the books or other resources mentioned in this episode, be sure to check out the description box below. Until next time, be abundant.